Hello, my name's Barry Morse, and once upon a time, I was Lieutenant Gerard of the Fugitive. Ha! <laughs> Gives you all a bit of a shock, doesn't it? Because <laughs> I don't look very much like this hard-faced, relentless character that I used to play. Uh, that's partly because a good few years have gone by, and uh, what is it, almost 30 years ago that we started on this series? And, of course, partly because I don't sound like that. Uh, Philip Gerard with his, <clears throat> I hope, thoroughly convincing American accent. There's a reason for that, too. I'm not an American. I'm, in fact, uh, well, I'll tell you. I was born in London, England. And so I was British by the accident of birth. But then, <clears throat> some years later, I had the good sense and the good luck to marry a girl from a partly Canadian family. And so some 40 odd years ago, we came to Canada and I became a Canadian by the exercise of choice. Now, this series of videos, which is being released for your enjoyment at home, I'm going to be introducing as we go along and as well as giving you the outline of each episode, I hope to be giving you a little bit of trivia gossip on the way about uh, myself and about those who worked with us on that famous, wonderful series, which I still remember with great joy and affection. The Fugitive, as you know, I'm sure, was produced by Quinn Martin <clears throat> and was based from an original outline by Roy Huggins. And what many people don't know is that it was loosely derived from the great French classic novel by Victor Hugo called Les Miserables, which, of course, in more recent times has become a very famous musical. Even the names of the characters, or at least my character, Lieutenant Gerard, is not unlike the relentless police detective in Les Miserables, whose name is Javert. Anyway, <clears throat> this whole series had its beginnings in 1963, and I see that this first episode on this first volume was aired, in fact, on Christmas Eve of 1963. And it's called The Girl from Little Egypt. Now, The Girl from Little Egypt is a distraught young stewardess who just accidentally happens to run over or run down uh, Kimball with her car. And feeling guilty, she takes Kimball home and cares for him as he becomes delirious and relives some of his past. Then, in flashbacks, we learn about the night that Kimball's wife was murdered, his seeing the one-armed man, leaving the scene of the crime, and then Kimball's trial, which included Gerard's prosecution testimony, and then the fatal train wreck, which allowed Kimball to escape death row and begin his long quest to clear his name. In other words, it sets up more or less the basic structure of the whole Fugitive series. So, here now is the girl from Little Egypt. <laughs> Name, Dr. Richard Kimball. The destination, Death Row State Prison. The irony, Richard Kimball is innocent. Proved guilty, what Richard Kimball could not prove was that moments before discovering his murdered wife's body, he saw a one-armed man running from the vicinity of his home. Richard Kimball ponders his fate as he looks at the world for the last time and sees only darkness. But in that darkness, fate moves its huge hand. The Fugitive A QM production Starring David Jansen as The Fugitive. Co-starring Ed Nelson. Diane Brewster. And special guest star, Pamela Tiffin. Also starring Barry Morse as Lieutenant Gerard. Tonight's episode, The Girl from Little Egypt. Early. 
truth. Honey, I, I was going to tell you. But you didn't. I had to hear it from your partner just before we landed. A fine man, he called you, and he thinks your wife is wonderful. Wonderful? Neurotic, possessive, close to being an alcoholic. All right, let everybody else think she's wonderful. I don't want anybody to know the truth but you and my lawyer. Divorce. I don't believe you. Whether or not you do, it's the truth. Do you honestly think the past four months have meant nothing to me? Honey, our place, our parks, our bridges. Paul, please. Our Wednesday evenings. Don't do this to me. Ruth, it's done. We can't go back now. And I can't go on. Cleared up, Miss Norton. I'll notify the airline. Yes, sir. Checked his bag. It's the usual stuff. No ID. Small amount of cash, about $12. Sober. How badly is he hurt? Might only be a concussion instead of a fractured skull. Bruises, cuts, deep one on his leg. Could I... Would it be possible for me to go to the hospital? To make sure he's going to be all right? For your sake, Miss, I hope he's all right. Everything you could. I have to deliver a... I don't know how many kids. I'll, I'll be back to see you later. Hello, darling. Feeling? Well, not very well. I didn't know they were going to put me in so deep. Well, they gave you the privilege of telling me. Do we have a son or a daughter? We had a son. Helen, I love you. We can look forward to a long, full life. I am so happy. I said, Doctor, I ought to have the words. All I can say is I'm sorry. In time, we'll be able... What's wrong? A child was stillborn. Dead. What else? Why did they put me under like that? What time is it? How long was I in there? A long time. Why? What else did they do to me? We almost lost you, Helen. What else? It was the only way we can't have children. No children. My baby dead. Hey. Hey. We will have children. We'll manage to. Dead. 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 Helen. Helen. 
Officer Westfall, welcome back. Shall we notify Alan? Mister. Browning. George Browning. Say, Helen, I... Girl, I know. Did I mention any others? No, just a lot of mumbling we couldn't make out. We. Oui. Miss Norton. She's been here ever since you came in. What happened? You tell me. Just listen, miss. I, uh... I had a ride. I... I got out of the car. I... Waited. I, I uh, ran out of... cigarettes. I saw a place up the highway. I, uh... Should have looked for I stepped out. You stepped out? I tried to jump back. Sorry. <laughs> 